My name is Tabitha. I was just 14 when my life changed forever. I lost both my parents in a terrible fire. And that's when everything started to fall apart. I became a prostitute at a tender age. Something I never thought would happen to me. This is my story. And I want you to listen closely because what happened to me is happening to so many other girls. It's a painful story, but there are important lessons in it. Please, listen to the end and try to understand how I ended up on this path. Once upon a time, I had a beautiful life. I lived in a peaceful village with my loving family. There was my father, my mother, and my older sister. We were so happy together. We lived in a big house filled with laughter and love. Those were the best days of my life. My father was rich and kind. He always made sure we had everything we needed. My mother was lovely and caring. She made the house feel warm and cozy. My older sister was my best friend. We played together, laughed together, and shared all our secrets. Every day was filled with joy. We would sit around the table eating delicious meals that my mother cooked. My father would tell us funny stories and we would all laugh. My sister and I would run around the garden playing games and having fun. Life was perfect. Our home was big and beautiful. We had everything we needed and more. But most importantly, we had each other. We were a happy family and I felt so lucky to be part of it. But little did I know, everything was about to change. The happy days wouldn't last forever. The laughter and joy would soon be replaced by sadness and tears. My beautiful life was about to be turned upside down. One dark, terrible night, everything changed. I was sleeping peacefully when I heard a loud noise. I woke up and smelled smoke. My heart started beating fast. I ran out of my room and saw flames everywhere. Our house was on fire. The flames were fierce and unstoppable. They burned so bright and hot. I tried to find my family. I called out, Mama, Papa, Sister, but I couldn't see them. The smoke was thick and it was hard to breathe. I ran through the house, trying to save them but the fire was too strong. The heat was too intense. I couldn't get to them. I felt so helpless. I wanted to save them, but I couldn't. The fire took everything from me. I lost my father, my mother, and my sister in that terrible fire. My beautiful home was gone. Everything was gone. I was left all alone with nothing but my sadness and fear. I cried and cried. The pain was too much to bear. I felt so lost without my family. The memories of that night still haunt me. I can still see the flames and hear the crackling of the fire. I can still feel the fear and the sadness. From that night on, my life was never the same. I was no longer the happy girl with a loving family. I was an orphan, alone in the world. The fire took everything from me and I didn't know how I would ever be happy again. Not long after the tragedy, a woman named Auntie Bimpy came to our village. Auntie Bimpy was rich and well known for helping orphan girls. She had a big house in the city and always dressed in beautiful clothes. Everyone in the village respected her. When Auntie Bimpy heard about my loss, she came to see me. She looked at me with kind eyes and said, Oh, Tabitha, I'm so sorry for what happened to you. Losing your family is very hard, but don't worry, I can help you. She promised to take me to the city. In the city, you will have a better life, she said. I will take care of you. You will go to school and you will have many opportunities. You will be happy again. I wanted to believe her. I really did. Auntie Binkpe seemed so kind and caring. 
She told me about the wonderful things in the city. You will see tall buildings, bright lights, and many people. It will be so different from the village. You will love it, she said. She promised to give me everything I needed. You will have nice clothes, good food, and a warm bed to sleep in. You will never have to worry about anything again, Auntie Bingpei said. Her promises sounded so wonderful. I thought maybe, just maybe, I could be happy again. The sadness in my heart felt a little lighter. I started to hope that my life could be good once more. At first, I didn't want to go. I was scared and unsure. The village was the only place I had ever known. The thought of leaving everything behind made my heart heavy. I didn't know what the city would be like, and I was afraid of the unknown. But my friends, Ugo and Adana, helped me see things differently. They came to me one afternoon and said, Tabitha, you should go with Auntie Bimkpe. There is more to life than our village. You have a chance to make something of yourself. Ugo looked at me with kind eyes and said, Tabitha, you deserve a better life. Auntie Bimpe can help you. She can give you opportunities that you won't find here. You need to be brave. Adana nodded and added, Think about your future, Tabitha. In the city, you can go to school and learn so many things. You can have a new beginning. Don't let fear hold you back. Their words gave me strength. I realized they were right. The village held too many sad memories and I needed to find a way to move forward. Maybe Auntie Bimpe's promises could come true. Maybe I could be happy again. After much thought, I decided to trust Auntie Bimpe and leave the only place I had ever known. I packed my few belongings and hugged my friends goodbye. Ugo and Adana smiled at me, their eyes filled with hope and encouragement. As I walked away with Auntie Bimpe, I looked back at my friends one last time. Their encouragement filled my heart with hope. I was scared, but I was also ready for a new beginning. I hoped that the city would bring me the happiness and opportunities that Auntie Bimpe had promised. When I arrived in the big city, I was amazed. It was so different from the village, so bright, so loud, and so full of life. The streets were busy with people, cars, and tall buildings. Everywhere I looked, there were bright lights and colorful signs. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. Auntie Bimpe's house was huge and beautiful. It had tall gates, a big garden, and many rooms. I thought, this must be the place where all my dreams will come true. But as I stepped inside, something didn't feel right. I noticed the other girls Auntie Bimkpe had taken in. They were living in a small, cramped room at the back of the house. They dressed in ways that made me uncomfortable. Short skirts, tight tops, and lots of makeup. They looked so different from the girls in the village. I didn't understand why they dressed like that. They didn't look happy and their eyes seemed sad and tired. I felt a strange feeling in my stomach, but I pushed those thoughts aside. I wanted to believe in Auntie Bingpei's promises. Auntie Bingpei welcomed me warmly. She showed me to a nice room, much better than the one the other girls were in. You are special, Tabitha, she said. You will live with me like a little sister. I was happy to be treated well but I couldn't stop thinking about the other girls. Why were they living in such a small room? Why did they look so sad? But every time I had these thoughts, I told myself, maybe this is just how things are in the city. Days went by and I helped Auntie Bingpei with chores around the house. I cleaned, cooked, and did everything she asked. She was kind to me and I started to feel a bit more at ease. But the uneasiness about the other girls never completely went away. I tried to talk to them, but they were quiet and didn't say much. 
they seemed scared and always looked over their shoulders. I didn't understand, but I thought maybe they were just shy. I wanted to believe Auntie Bimpi's promises. I wanted to trust that she had brought me here for a better life. So I pushed away the uncomfortable feelings and focused on my new life in the big city. I hoped that soon everything would make sense and I would find the happiness I was looking for. Auntie Bimpe treated me well at first. She called me her little sister and I felt special. She gave me nice clothes and good food. I thought, maybe this is the start of a better life. But soon, the promises she made began to fade away. Instead of going to school, I was kept at home doing chores every day. I cooked, cleaned, and took care of the house. I woke up early and worked until late. I scrubbed floors, washed dishes, and did laundry. I felt like a maid, not a little sister. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. The life Auntie Binkpe promised seemed so far away. I watched other children in the neighborhood go to school with their backpacks and books. I felt sad and lost. Why am I not going to school? I wondered. I gathered the courage to ask Auntie Bimpe about the school and opportunities she had promised. One evening, after finishing my chores, I found her in the living room. Auntie Bimpe, I said softly, you promised to send me to school. When will I start? She looked at me with a kind smile and said, Tabitha, don't worry, you are still young. The time will come. Just be patient. Her words gave me a small glimmer of hope. I wanted to believe her, so I held on to that hope, even as I continued to work from morning till night. Every day, I cleaned, cooked, and took care of the house. I did my best to stay positive, thinking, maybe tomorrow will be the day Auntie Bimpe sends me to school. But as more days passed, my hope began to fade. The other girls never went to school, and I started to wonder if I ever would. I watched them leave the house at night, dressed in fancy clothes, looking sad and tired. I didn't understand where they went or why they were so unhappy. I began to feel a deep sadness inside me. I miss my family, my village, and the simple joys of my old life. The city, which once seemed so full of promise, now felt like a place of broken dreams. One day, as I was scrubbing the kitchen floor, I thought about my mother and father. They always wanted the best for me. They wanted me to have an education and a bright future. What would they think if they saw me now? I wondered. I felt tears welling up in my eyes, but I quickly wiped them away. I didn't want Auntie Bimkpe to see me crying. I needed to stay strong, even though I felt so weak inside. Deep down, I started to wonder if things would ever get better. Will I ever go to school? Will I ever have the opportunities Auntie Bingpei promised? The questions echoed in my mind, but I had no answers. I tried to stay hopeful, but it was hard. The promises that once seemed so real now felt like distant dreams. I felt lost and alone, trapped in a life that was nothing like the one I had hoped for. As I continued my chores, I whispered to myself, maybe one day things will change. Maybe one day I will find the happiness I once knew. But deep down, I was starting to lose faith. The life I had hoped for seemed so far away, and I didn't know if I would ever reach it. When I turned 15, Auntie Bimkpe called me into her room. She smiled and said, Tabitha, it's time for me to fulfill one of my promises to you. I have an opportunity for you that will help you make money. I was so excited. I thought, this is finally my chance. Maybe she's going to send me to school or give me a special job. 
my heart was full of hope and happiness. The next day, Auntie Bimpe told me to pack my things. We are going somewhere special, she said. I packed quickly, my mind racing with dreams of what my future might hold. I imagined myself in a school uniform, learning new things, making new friends, and building a bright future. We got into Auntie Bingpe's car and drove through the city. I looked out the window, watching the buildings and people pass by. My excitement grew with each passing moment. Finally, we stopped in front of a large, beautiful house. Auntie Bimkpe took my hand and led me inside. A rich man named Chief Anikulapo greeted us. He smiled at me, but there was something in his eyes that made me feel uneasy. Auntie Bimkpe talked with him for a while, and then she turned to me. Tabitha, she said, you will be staying here. Chief Anikulapo needs someone to help with the housework. This is a great opportunity for you to make money and have a better life. I felt a sinking feeling in my stomach. This was not what I had been promised. I thought I was going to school, not becoming a maid. I looked at Auntie Bimkpe with tears in my eyes. But Auntie, you said I would go to school, I whispered. Auntie Bimpe's smile faded and her voice became stern. This is the best I can offer you right now. You should be grateful for this opportunity, she said. Then she turned and left, leaving me alone in the big house. I felt betrayed and heartbroken. This was not what I had hoped for, not what I had dreamed of. I was not going to school. I was not going to have the opportunities Auntie Bimpe had promised. I was just a maid, working for a rich man in a house that didn't feel like home. The days that followed were hard. I worked from morning till night, cleaning, cooking, and taking care of the house. Chief Anikulapo and his wife were demanding and sometimes unkind. I felt like a prisoner, trapped in a life I didn't want. Every night, I cried myself to sleep, thinking about my family, my village, and the promises that had been broken. I felt so alone and so far from the happiness I once knew. My dreams of a better life seemed like distant memories, and I didn't know if I would ever find a way out. In Chief Anikulapo's house, I worked every day from morning till night. I ran errands, cleaned every corner, cooked meals, and did everything that was asked of me. My hands were always busy, and my heart felt heavy with sadness. But the worst part was not the endless chores. It was Chief Anikulapo, the man of the house. He began to take advantage of me. Late at night, he would come to my room. He forced himself on me, and I felt powerless to stop him. I cried and begged him to stop, but he didn't care. One day, when his wife returned from a trip, I tried to tell her what was happening. With tears in my eyes, I said, Madam Alice, Chief Anikulapo is hurting me. Please help me. She looked at me coldly and said, That is part of your service. We paid Auntie Bimpe for you, so we can do whatever we want. Her words cut through me like a knife. I felt so alone, so trapped. I realized there was no one to help me, no one to protect me. Those six months were the darkest of my life. Every night, I endured the pain and humiliation. During the day, I worked tirelessly, trying to push away the memories of the night. I felt like a prisoner in that big house with no way to escape. I thought about my family and the happy days in the village. I missed my father's laughter, my mother's warmth, and my sister's friendship. I wished I could go back to those days, to the time before the fire, before Auntie Bimkpe's broken promises. But there was no going back. I was stuck in a nightmare, and each day felt like an eternity. 
my heart ached with the weight of my sadness and fear. I wondered if I would ever find a way out, if I would ever be free from this terrible life. I held on to a small glimmer of hope, a tiny spark deep inside me. I told myself that one day, things would get better. One day, I would find a way to escape. But for now, I had to endure. I had to survive, even though it felt like my spirit was breaking a little more each day. When my time at Chief Anikulapo's house was up, Auntie Bingpe came to take me back. I felt a flicker of hope, thinking maybe things would change. Maybe she would care about what I had been through. As soon as we got back to her house, I told her everything that had happened, every painful detail, hoping she would understand and help me. But Auntie Bimpe just looked at me and said, Sorry, Tabitha. Then she moved on, as if my words meant nothing. She had already brought in another girl to take over the chores at Chief Anikulapo's house. My heart sank. I realized that to her, I was just another girl to be used. She sent me to live with the other orphan girls in a small, cramped room. The room was cold and dark, filled with sadness and despair. I had seen the other girls before, but now I was one of them. We were all trapped with no way out. And that's when my life as a prostitute began. Every night, Auntie Bimpe would dress us up in revealing clothes and take us out on the streets. She found men who would pay for our services and we had no choice but to follow them home. The first time it happened, I felt a deep sense of shame and degradation. I couldn't believe this was my life. I felt so degraded, so worthless, but there was no escape. During the day, we were locked in the house and at night, we were sent out to work. Auntie Bimpe made sure we couldn't run away. The house was like a prison, and she was the warden. Each night was a nightmare. The men treated us like objects, not caring about our feelings or our pain. I felt my spirit being crushed a little more with each encounter. I tried to hold on to some hope, but it was so hard. I remembered the promises Auntie Bimpe had made. She had promised me a better life, a chance to go to school, to have opportunities. But those promises were all lies. My life was now filled with darkness and despair. I miss my family more than ever. I miss the days when I felt loved and safe. I wished I could go back to those days, but I knew that was impossible. My reality was now this life of misery and pain. Every night, as I walked the streets, I prayed for a way out. I prayed for a miracle. I hoped that someday, someone would come and save me. But until then, I had to survive. I had to keep going, even though every part of me wanted to give up. One night, as I stood on the street with the other girls, a man named Dan picked me. He seemed different from the others. He had kind eyes and a gentle smile. As we walked together, he asked me, Why are you doing this? For the first time in a long while, I felt safe enough to tell my story. I told him about the fire that took my family, about Auntie Bimpe's broken promises, and about the terrible things I had endured at Chief Anikulapo's house. I told him, how Auntie Bimpe had forced me into this life and how trapped and hopeless I felt. Dan listened carefully, his eyes filled with compassion. I'm so sorry, Tabitha, he said softly. No one should have to go through what you've been through. His kindness made me feel a small flicker of hope. Maybe, just maybe, he would help me. We reached his home and he invited me inside. Unlike the other men, he didn't rush or make me feel uncomfortable. Instead, he offered me something to eat and drink, and we sat in his living room talking. I felt a warmth I hadn't felt in a long time. Dan treated me like a human being, 
not an object. He didn't force himself on me or make me feel scared. We talked for hours, and for the first time in so long, I felt a glimmer of hope. As the night went on, I felt exhausted from the emotions and the long day. Dan noticed and said, You can rest here. I won't bother you. You're safe. I hesitated at first, but his gentle demeanor reassured me. I lay down on the couch in the living room, feeling safe for the first time in a long while. Dan left me alone and went to his room, closing the door behind him. I fell asleep quickly, comforted by the thought that maybe, just maybe, there was still some kindness left in the world. But little did I know, my night was about to take a dark turn. When I woke up, I realized how wrong I was. The room felt different, darker, and filled with an eerie silence. I rubbed my eyes and saw Dan standing in the corner dressed in strange clothes, a red wrapper and a white singlet. He held a small calabash in his hand and his eyes looked cold and menacing. Fear gripped me as I realized Dan wasn't the kind man I thought he was. He was a ritualist and he had planned to use me for something dark and evil. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to understand what was happening. I jumped up from the couch desperate to escape. I ran towards the living room door, but as I reached it, I saw Auntie Binkpe standing there. She was dressed just like Dan, with a sinister smile on her face. My blood ran cold. She had set me up, and there was no escape. Auntie Binkpe, why? I cried, my voice trembling with fear. She sneered at me and said, you thought you could escape, Tabitha. You belong to us now. What happened next was something I can hardly bring myself to say. The room was dark and I was surrounded by seven men, all dressed in ritualistic clothing. Candles flickered around us, casting eerie shadows on the walls. It felt like a nightmare, but I knew it was real. Dan and Auntie Bingpi began chanting strange words and the men moved closer to me. I screamed, pleading for them to let me go, but they ignored my cries. I felt a paralyzing fear as they grabbed me and pulled me towards the center of the room. I closed my eyes, trying to block out what was happening, but the sounds and smells were overwhelming. I prayed for a miracle, for someone to save me, but no help came. My body shook with terror and I felt utterly alone and powerless. The events of that night left scars on my soul that will never heal because this is just the beginning of what changed my life completely. Did I found a way to escape? Did help came through? Or did in one way or the other a miracle happened that changed the story of my life? Answers to these questions will be revealed in the next part of my story. So, Subscribe and stay tuned so that you won't miss out on finding out what actually later happened to me that night in the dark room with Auntie Bimkpi, Mr. Dan, and the seven men surrounding me. Thanks for watching and see you in part two.